hashtag single with Jeanette and Tracy. We are not relationship experts or sex therapists. We are two people navigating the world as single, independent feminists, having honest conversations with other singles in today's device-obsessed culture. We hope you'll join us on this journey as we navigate the ins and outs of singledom. Hi guys, welcome back to Hashtag Single. I am your host, Jeanette Bonner, and I am joined today in the studio uh, by my friend Misha. Misha, thank you for being on Hashtag Single with me. Super honored to be here. And James is our voice of the patriarchy. Yeah, hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. I will speak for all of it. <laughs> no, no. You speak for you. That is a disclaimer that we need. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> your opinions are your own and they do not match all my guys. Not there all James. There we go. <laughs> but you represent the patriarchy by being here. So all right, great. Thank, thank you for agreeing to do that. Um, so Misha, I start off every episode by asking my guest, where are you at in your single journey? <laughs> Stretch it out, get comfy. Let me just dig in there. I don't really give a damn right now. Cool. Cool. <laughs> and that's kind of the first time I've been able to say that in my whole life. Uh, I think relationships Romantically, I think rom- I think romantic relationships are very cool and very important and sacred, and I always have. And it used to be one of my goals to find my perfect partner mm-hmm. and be like such a good girlfriend to, to him. Oh. And then I just sort of gave up. <laughs> oh, God. And it's great. <laughs> this is where we're at in our society. I keep meeting lovely, wonderful women that are just like, this is a disaster. I'm, I'm, I would rather just live my life and be happy rather than pursue this thing that gives me so much anxiety and like, what, what for? I have a lovely life, you know? I don't know if I have a lovely life. I have a very successful life career wise. I'm doing almost everything that I've ever wanted to do and more. And that is super satisfying. I wouldn't call it balanced. I wouldn't say my quality of life is especially high. I wouldn't even say that I necessarily have room for a partner, which is probably why I don't have someone right now, because I I don't make room for them. Mm. And, you know, that's really on me. I can't blame anyone or anything else. But it's a city of people who don't make room for intimacy. A hundred percent. Yeah. But one of the reasons I started this podcast is because... I think it's okay to be completely satisfied and comfortable in your own life and not be like, I'm, my life is not complete because I don't have a partner. And that is a idea that we've been kind of taught since kids. It's literally the patriarchy being like, you need to, you're supposed to get married and you're supposed to raise a family, but it's okay to not be in a relationship. It's not, it's okay to not have a partner. Right. Really we're in an unprecedented time for women in human history we've been taught that since human beings were created that there is a certain dynamic for a partnership that with few exceptions in regards to species and cultures slash uh societies it's a patriarchy that the male is the stronger Mm -hmm. one and then the woman sort of builds her life around that so I don't think we should blame ourselves for feeling weird. It's a transitional time for women Mm -hmm. uh, and for women in power and for women in relationships and everything else. So it's actually quite an anomaly that we're able to even sit here and have this conversation. It's so true. I mean, even just like when you think about the timeline of the 20th century, like we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had this podcast. Well, we wouldn't have had a podcast, (laughs) Um, like we wouldn't have had this podcast in the eighties. You know what I mean? Like, even the women were, like, killing it in the workforce. They weren't, they weren't like, oh, I'm satisfied without having a partner, without having children, because I'm good in my life and I've achieved all the things I want to achieve, you know? So you're right. Totally unprecedented. Yeah. And, and so that hardwiring for a lot of our fellow humans, you know, I think we should just cut ourselves some slack and cut guys some slack, too, of, like, you know, it, it's hard to kind of keep up with the changes and... I can't believe I'm saying these words, but I don't know. These days I'm trying to be more forgiving about there not being as many options for guys who are going to be able to keep up with my level of progressiveness, if that makes sense. Yes, yes, it does. I'm with you. I love that. I love that about you, too. Oh, yeah, I'm super weird. (laughs) It's not weird because 
It's it's great. It's great. But it's it's it is challenging because the dating world is changing and we're all trying to navigate our different roles here. So you're single right now. Yeah. Oh, and the other reason I'm okay with it is because I actually manifested my perfect partner a few months ago. (laughs) Tell me everything. (laughs) What the hell does that mean? Well, I had just gone through a a harrowing breakup that was utterly devastating personally, psychologically. I'm Uh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. No. Yeah. It was really quite uh, abusive and bad. Yeah. So, um, so in the midst of that, the only thing that would put a smile on my face as I was trying to fall asleep at night and you know, I have terrible insomnia. So to relax me, I would think about, well, what does my perfect partner look like? And I pictured him, his height, his face, his mustache, his hair. <laughs> mustache? Oh, yeah. He's Burt Reynolds, isn't he? Uh, no. <laughs> Same kind of family. But um, And so I pictured every detail very specifically. And then I imagined how he would make me feel. And I think for those of you who are visualizers and manifestors, it's the emotional component that really seems to lock it in it's like the homing beacon that pulls it to you is the feelings Mm -hmm. that the visuals elicit sure so i started to feel relaxed and joyful and completely seen and understood and then uh uh, two three weeks after that i was on an app not gonna say which one no No, you have to (laughs) we put it all on the table here girl tinder god damn it i was on tinder i was on tinder and (laughs) And I, I was just mindlessly going through it, and I do. saw him. Did you hear angels in, like, a choir? Was it like, oh, kind of. <laughs> You're the one. Yeah, it was really weird. Did he, he have was, a Burt Reynolds mustache? He, no, he, he was exactly from my fantasy, my, my imagination. He was the same person that I had. It was like I had seen him before, and then I was seeing him again. Did you meet this person? So this man, we started talking. We instantly had insane things in common like just weird random very like core life things in common and then i realized oh he's four thousand miles away (gasps) and i was like what are you doing you're swiping in new york he's like yeah i live in stockholm i'm a music producer and um i don't know why i made a profile for new york i just like new york (laughs) so then he came to meet me what yeah, he flew to see me and shut the front door. Yeah, he spent ten days with. This is a me. lifetime movie. I've seen this one actually. It was amazing and ten days. Yeah, yeah, ten days. And just, and like he stayed in your apartment uh, for a couple of them, and then he had a hotel for what? Yeah, yeah. It was. It That's was super brave. I, I don't think I would meet a stranger on the internet and then be like, "Come stay in my apartment with me." It was completely bizarre that it happened and yet every step of the way felt so natural and perfect and just right and we're like super good friends now so here's the catch right so on paper he lives in Stockholm. <laughs> and, no, that's i'm not afraid of distance but on paper i've never met anyone who was as good a match for me ever like and in person as well yeah but he he's in this career phase where he realized that he doesn't want a relationship with anybody Mm. And I'm like, fair enough. But there was absolutely no hard feelings or sadness or weirdness. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to go back to Stockholm and I'm going to see you again. Yeah, maybe it's just not the right time. Yeah. But unlike so many other things where it was like a a farewell, there was no struggle. There was no resentment or like insecurity. It was just great. So are you going to manifest the next one? I don't know. I'm kind (laughs) of tired now. It's exhausting. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you said you're not interested in dating. But so what, how long ago was this magical unicorn relationship? Uh, end of January. Oh, oh recent, like literally yeah. last month. Yeah, I thought about bringing him on the podcast. And I was like, uh, no, it's too weird. I don't want to hear his sex stories. Weird? It's too much. Not that like, that's not what the podcast is at all. Be like sharing sex stories. Although we do like a good sex story if you have them. Um, that would be really fascinating. But no, the point is not, the point of this podcast is not to be like, this state sucks and we're dealing with it until someone comes along. It's supposed to be beautiful and positive in this, in this state. So bringing in someone that you had slept with would ruin the magic. Oh, good. You'd be like, Hey, we're both single, but right now we're naked. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's talk, let's go back to Tinder. Cause you have a very interesting relationship with Tinder being a filmmaker. You actually have a, short film. Yeah, I wrote a series about it, actually. About dating on Tinder. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I don't know how we're regulated, but we are talking about dating, so I'm just going to put know, that original title up doing. there. It was called Tinder is the Night, and then she had to rename it because there was like a 
threat of a lawsuit or something like that, right? They know like that. <laughs> yeah, no. So now it's called textual intercourse, which is, I think, far better anyway. Oh, thanks. But so what is your harrowing relationship with Tinder that caused you to create an entire fictional narrative around it? Well, it's a flawed premise as a piece of technology because the whole thing is designed to facilitate intimacy and it actually does the opposite. Oh, totally. And it changes your brain chemistry to create a catalog mm -hmm, effect. Mm -hmm. And it dehumanizes the dating pool for you. And it also triggers the same area of the brain as randomized reward systems for mm, people who mm -hmm. are in Vegas. And get oh, wait, you told this. I want to share this because when we were discussing topics, you, you gave me the topic of uh, the addictive infrastructure of online dating or Tinder is like a bad trip to Vegas, which I thought was like the best book title. <laughs> yeah, because rarely are you ever going to get anything of value, but you are going to waste pretty much guaranteed a piece of every single day on this thing. Totally. Seeking some kind of reward. Yeah. Have you used other apps as well as Tinder? I've used them all. Yeah, girl, me too. <laughs> I could write like a, a Yelp review for every single uh, dating app. <clears throat> and it's hilarious because everyone, every time I'm like, this isn't working, this isn't working. Some other well-meaning girlfriend is like, oh, but have you tried this? You should try this one. And so there's this idea of like, well, the next one will be, will work. And if that doesn't work, then there's another one that will work. And it's ridiculous because it's the same a pool of people and for the most part it's the same as you said infrastructure and like how it works so i don't think there's any solution of like this app is worse than the other app no i'm i'm kind of into uh this is a little taboo i'm into it but <laughs> i'm kind of into in-person old-fashioned irl dating yeah. you're not the first person this is this is a continuing theme who it's has dirty <laughs> How dare you want to meet people in real life um, who have like sworn off the apps and are like, I'm only going to be meeting people in real life or my former, not former, my prior guest, uh, Shoshana, she um, considers herself bisexual and she was saying she meets guys on apps and women in real life, mm. which I found also extremely interesting. So there's also a lot more women in, in this city. There's more single women. Is that so? I don't think it is. I yeah. think there's been studies that show that like it's a solid 50-50. But the problem with that is that the gay male population is larger. So mm -hmm. that changes the percentages a little bit. But what's your what's your what's your go-to app? What do you like the best? Which um, one? of all the horrible choices, which is the best? Right now I'm on Bumble. It's actually not bad. It seems to be decently attractive people on there right now. Yeah. It's a bit basic, but not too bad by basic i mean um reduced to like finance real estate oh oh i see the people it, IT guys yeah i hate bumble because of the 24 hour thing like how if you like someone it expires in 24 hours if they don't get back to you and uh <laughs> yeah James is shaking his head over there. Welcome back to you. So that's like really if I don't spend every single day checking my dating app, I don't want to be like, oh, God, I hope one of the 10 people I swiped on yesterday has responded. Like that's a horrible energy to hold throughout the day. So that that expiration thing really like you finally match with someone and then they're like, Bill has 24 hours to respond. And you're like, come on, Bill, just say hi. You know, like, let's run out that clock. That's, well, that's if just Bill, that's super messed up. If Bill really cared about Bumble, he would have his notif notification set to on. <laughs> Is that and so? And he would get alerted when he had matched with somebody. Yeah. But that's how you weed out the people who aren't really in it to win it, I think. I've had one date on Bumble, some total. You have really terrible dating stories yeah. that you post on Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I the do. The guys sound really bad. They are bad. I don't know what you're like. They, they are bad. This is, I think it's a. Where do you find these call? shows? <laughs> um, on the apps. Yeah, but not on, uh, not all on the same apps. But um, it, it is my personal belief, and obviously I'm biased, but it's my personal belief that feminism has changed the rules and the expectations around dating, and that guys don't know how to behave properly. And also just being able to. Like, our swipe culture has reduced men to, like, you're pretty, you're not pretty, you're pretty, you're not pretty, you're hot, I like your dress. You know what I mean? It's I mean, I do that, too, but, yeah, it sucks. 
I try to initiate a conversation with someone that has said something that I think is of interest or just like, oh my God, I, I love, I went to the Bahamas last year too. Just anything that you can connect on, but being reduced to like, you're attractive, you're not attractive, you're attractive, you're not attractive is not forwarding society. Oops. What? <laughs> that you do that? <laughs> We all do it. This is what I'm saying. This is this is our phone culture of like, yes, 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 no, yes, yes, whatever. You know, that like immediacy of judgment. Yeah. Well, and I have also had historically terrible taste in men. Like many of my choices have been bad because the first thing I look for is their appearance or sexual chemistry, which, by the way, angry people are really good in bed. <laughs> I, um, I don't doubt that. I think anger and sex is like, that's a very fine line. They li- they're good bed partners, literally good bed partners. Um, you have another book title, which I'm going to read back to you. It's called How to Make the Apps Your Bitch by Misha Calvert. Yeah, so it's not a numbers game. That's the first thing. All you manifestors out there, you'll vibe with what I'm saying. But hmm. if you're not in the right headspace, when you open, when you open that app, it's not going to go well. You have to be the boss of the app you have to know that what you have what you have to know that what you want is exactly out there waiting for you without any like if you have even a drop of doubt about finding exactly what you want it's not going to work i'm into that so you have to feel good about yourself i mean it's a it is a powerful thing to open a catalog of human beings like some sort of weird fucking marriage mail order <laughs> date shit. Yeah, yeah. And swipe on people's lives until you find someone that you either want to have sex with or have a talk with. Yeah. It's just super, I think Fucked it can up. be dangerous. Yeah. So you have to make sure that your mind and heart are in a very good place and a very clean place. Because if you go into that with any sort of lingering self-loathing or limiting beliefs about yourself, you're going to get magnified back 10 times those bad thoughts about you yeah, and what you don't deserve. Yeah. There's so, a, there's a lot of psychology around this. There's a lot of dating coach. I mean, there's like that very famous book called calling in the one, which is entirely what you're talking about. It's just about positive energy and manifestation and, and opening yourself up to possibility because so many of us go into dating apps and dating in general with, with, um, a a closed off energy, a negative energy of, I hate this. I'm only doing this because it isn't working for me. So you're already mad at the universe. Yeah. Yeah. I've had the best kind of, I've had the best experiences when I've known exactly the person and type of experience that I wanted, whether it was calling in a Swedish stallion yeah. from overseas <laughs> Swedish stallion. or oh just like the hookup of a lifetime. And I'm like, he's going to be this height with eyes, this color, and he's going to dress like this. And that's what I want right now. Cause it's June 21st. And that's what I freaking want at 3 PM. And so then he's there for the next day. It you sounds know? like you, you've had like pretty good, experiences and results on the apps so why are you swearing off them right now well i actually think i have some limiting beliefs around the partnership thing finding somebody who looks finding somebody who meets my aesthetic criteria isn't a problem it's finding somebody who's in it for the long haul whether that's a year or two years like i'm not don't freaking marry me here i'm just longer than a few months three dates yeah yeah i have a hard time getting past the third date as well so i think i i just have stuff to look at in myself like i'm not going to blame the apps i'm not going to blame the people i've been on dates with i just have to look to myself because i'm the one thing in common with all of this so what am i doing well i just think that at number one my career takes up like precedence it takes 12 hours a day seven days a week yeah so there's already very little time for me to have an emotional space for somebody to enter into my life. Totally. And then there's probably something there of just like, I don't, I'm afraid to actually be seen. Afraid that, so? uh, that if somebody gets to know me, maybe they're not going to want to be there for a long time. Imposter syndrome. Maybe something if like that. If you knew me, you wouldn't possibly actually like me. Yeah. I think everyone goes through that to some extent. I certainly go through that. I feel like there's a, a person that I put forward on the first date um, it's not not me, but it's not 
me. You know what I mean? It's not like if you really got, it's not me to my core. True me. Yeah. Like me when I'm not wearing makeup, when I'm in a bad mood, when I'm feeling insecure. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. And I don't think we should leave with that on the first date, but I know that I, I think a lot about like me when I'm kind of in my pajamas, which is a lot because I work from home <laughs> and I'm just like. Who would want to like be? Want who would want to hang out with I this? Know. And that's a terrible. That's like a not true thought. Yeah, it's a lie. That's right. That's like a. You're right. It's you said it properly. It's like an entirely limiting belief of the the ego that is trying to keep us safe because putting yourself out there in front of other people is scary, and there's the possibility of rejection. So it's easier to be like, oh, they wouldn't possibly want this. You reject yourself first. Totally. A hundred percent. I think, I think we all do that. I think not just women, but women are particularly bad at it. Yeah. So right now, here's what I'm into. I'm into taking my career to the next level because I'm about to break through to some really exciting stuff. Excellent. Congrats. Thank you very much. And then when that happens, I'm really excited to see what kind of people I'm going to meet IRL through those channels of artistic community and creating professionally. Yeah. I think about this all the time because you and I being in the entertainment industry, like you think about how many people we meet on an everyday basis. We like a lot of my friends who are single are, are complaining that like they've got their nine to five workplace and that's the whole selection of people that they can date unless they get involved in extracurricular activities. But being in the film industry, we meet so many people on a continual basis. I keep thinking in the bottom of my gut, like we're so lucky because we keep getting introduced to new people. There's gotta be someone in a new pool that we don't know yet. That And because it's Hollywood, half of them are psycho, which is (laughs) perfect for us. It's fine. Yeah. (laughs) Cause we're normal. So they should be so good. <laughs> um, you have one more book title. <laughs> Do you love that I made you a publisher? Um, I like this one very much. How to channel your alpha tendencies as a female into a vessel that will attract, not repel, strong men. It's like right on Amazon. I love it so much. That's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a good title. <laughs> that's directly from you. And I was like, oh my God, that's the title of a book. Well, no one likes to be judged. And I think a lot of strong women can be very decisive and they've been through shit and hell well, they've been through shitty hell dating. Mm-hmm. And when you sit down across from a new young man, it's kind of hard to not feel cynical and resentful and judgmental and critiquing him. And we just have to be so careful and kind and really summon our compassion and our, our gentleness mm. because that's really scary and unpleasant for a guy to feel judged and, and condemned and also controlled. Yeah. And for, I'm not saying women shouldn't be control freaks because I'm a director, as you know, and the definition of a director is to be a control. Of course. Freak. Yeah. And same with me as a producer. Exactly. So I think there's a place for that, but that place is not a first date. <laughs> Where if you're in that control freak mode, you cannot establish intimacy. Mm. So we have to learn how to push that to the back to be there as a welcoming and encouraging equal to the person and also allow him to live in his strength. And I'm talking about women who are seeking a strong, uh, perhaps even alpha male. Yeah which I know a lot of alpha women who want an alpha male. It seems like a contradiction, but you, if you want an alpha male, you have to give him the room to let his alpha out. Right. I think this is something that is very at odds with feminism because um, we've been, we've grown into a generation of women who are strong, who know what they want, who are straightforward, who are aggressive, who aren't afraid to take risks. These are technically alpha qualities, if you want to call that. I talk about this on this podcast all the time, how I have um, typical aggressor qualities. Um, That doesn't mean aggressive in a negative way, but like I'm the one to initiate conversation. I'm the one to ask someone out on a date. Like I like assertive. Assertive is a better word. You're right. Um, So that I think that now that we've have a whole generation of these wonderful, beautiful, kick-ass, badass, strong women, um, A, 
men don't really know how to respond to that. And B, um, the it's shifted the rules of courting or of dating. And neither of us know exactly how to navigate this. Like if I'm going to be the assertive one, does that mean that I'm now the yeah, traditionally male role. It means you're the alpha. Yeah. Right. And now I'm paying for dinner and I'm, you know what I mean? Like, and so a guy is confused about his role and where do I fit into this without offending a strong feminist woman? Like you said it earlier, we're all just like navigating this new tide. Yeah. I think it depends on what you want, but if you're seeking an alpha male in the confines of your relationship, you just have to let him be that yeah. and not it, it, and it's not like well I want to be the alpha when I want to be the alpha and then honey you can be the alpha when I <laughs> you tell you you can be alpha on Tuesdays and I will take Wednesday yeah, through Friday it doesn't work like <laughs> no, that no. like it's not whenever we feel like it you there's certain kind of larger ebbs and flows of a relationship and certain larger patterns that if that's what you want you have to leave room for that up front and it's not less strong to put those traits of your, like, even though we fought for them and hard won them, like, you're right. I 100% have to, like, let that version of Jeanette go and summon my inner vulnerability and softness and I gentleness. I so want a boyfriend who will plan our vacation and <laughs> take care of the reservation. I just like, want someone to text me back. <laughs> that's another thing. I don't story. want to have to send the text that say, hey, which I did twice this month. I meant it when I said I had a good time last week and I'd like to see you again. So no. let me know your schedule. Why am, Why do I have to send that text? You shouldn't be sending. You should just forget them. <laughs> if they're not texting you back, I mean, honestly, they got, the guy knows what to do. Yeah. James? <laughs> James, we let James go. James is like chopping at the bit here. I can see him taking notes over here. You got a lot to say, my friend. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have a lot to say. I'm a, no, I'm I a, want you to have a lot to say. I'm more don't interested apologize. in, in uh, listening. This is great. Actually. Well, this is the whole point is like, like Misha and I could talk forever and we would have women listen to the podcast and that's just us shouting into the wind. But how great uh, to have someone say, well, first of all, hear the other perspective, sure. but we want to hear your perspective and be like, you know, you guys think it's this way and here's something that you may not have considered. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I, I, I would say that the thing that I have been thinking the most is that you may not have considered that I uh, am experiencing very similar things. Okay. Um, how so? Well, this idea of, well, first of all, your advice, Misha, for how to use the dates is I think spot on, like know exactly what you want before you open it mm -hmm. because the, the whole experience is designed to take the wheel. Yes. So if you yeah. don't have your both hands on the wheel, it will start driving. You are not driving anywhere. Immediately. Yeah. And that's really good. But um, I think we, uh, that's, that's a tall order to be discerning all of the time. Oh, yeah. And to be emotional, <laughs> like the perfect emotional balanced place where like, I am just a receiver. I foresee my future. Right. Like, I'll tell you, I'm that 2% of my life. Yeah, sure. And, but I mean, I love the metaphor of the app, right? So you also want to open the app kind of looking at what you might like, right? Like yes, the catalog. Learning your taste by flipping through window shopping. Sure. Gathering data. Gathering data. Great way to put it. Mm. So drawing a balance between I know exactly what I want and I'm listening and changing with the new data that's coming in, which I think relates very much to what you're saying about how you leave space and don't leave space when you're meeting someone on the first date. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I love how much power you take um, for the experience. And at the same time, how you're telling yourself to leave room for other people to take power in the experience. And I have a sense that those things aren't competitive. Oh, truly. Okay. They're, Sort Complimentary? Of, well, like either side of a tightrope. Um, if you lean one direction, sure, competitive that way, you fall off the tightrope. But really, they're complementary. Mm. Like you lean left when you've gone too far right and blah, blah, blah. Sure. But it, it's you discern the best the more you're listening and you listen the best the more you're discerning. Yeah. Yeah, because if you're just leaving room for... If you're leaving too much room for people to be who they are in your life, you can let in some real weird people. Definitely. Definitely. 
And that's why you have friends. That's why, that's why I have friends. I like running my stories behind by my friends so they can be like, what? Don't do that. That's crazy. <laughs> Wait, give us an example. Do you have one? Um, I do. I have a recent one. Tell. Do you um, tell. Dish it out. Let's go. Well, nothing's happened with it so far, so it, it should be one that's fine. So I was on, a, um, I had been on two dates with this woman. Okay. Which, um, how did you meet this person? I met her. Um, I was, um, I was uh, providing a pop-up coffee shop at the private school where she works. Oh, so you met in real so life? So in her workplace. Yes. I oh, around, okay. All which right. was so romantic. <laughs> Oh my God. I was like a, a real human. And like, we, you know, you have that sparkle you in your eye eyes. contact. <laughs> and we like, very naturally got phone numbers from each other. Like well I didn't even realize I was asking for her phone number and then she had already given it to me and it was fantastic. So we've had two dates. They were fine dates. They were wonderful. And then she texted me not too long after the second date. You want to go to the Hamptons this weekend? Oh shit. <laughs> Hold on. First of all, I hope your immediate response was, hell yes. And then your second response was, oh my God, this <laughs> woman might be crazy. <laughs> sort of. But that's why I have my, have my best friend, Cassie. She was, oh my God, this woman might be crazy. <laughs> Which I was like, you're, you're right. You're right. Oh, Thinking yeah. about Only that. because she works at a school. Hey. Mm. No, no. If she was. Oh, I thought that was a joke. Never, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, teachers aren't known to make the most amount of money. But if it's some richy rich, like, hell yeah, sugar mama. Okay, make, it all makes sense. Cougar makes sense. But if she's, like, an elementary school teacher or something's whatever. Something's missing. Then, something's awry. Right. Yeah. No, definitely. And the thing that somewhat is awry, also, like you said with your um, Swedish stallion, um, <laughs> if, if I was feeling 100% about this thing, I would be feeling 100% about this right, thing. Right, right. You seem like an intuitive guy. Well, thank you. Um, and I wasn't 100%. And also my friend could hear that as I was oh, talking yeah. about it, which yeah. I think was the first. And then after that, it's just reasons, really. Yeah. It's it's your ego stepping in and being like, well, actually, I don't have any time. And, you know, actually, she lives in Harlem and I'm in Crown Heights. And actually, you know, she's, sure. she's three years younger than me and I want someone older. It's so dumb. But all of that, I think, well, said, um, I was listening to a security expert talk about why dogs can smell evil on people. Right. Okay. Right. He said, that's not actually true. It's not that dogs know people better than you do. It's that your dog knows you better than you know yourself. So what your dog is responding to is how you feel mm. about whatever this person mm. is. So your dog doesn't smell that this is a, a robot, not a real person. Right. Your dog can tell that you Since know something's you're uncomfortable. up. Yeah. Right. So interesting. Which is why I think it's really important to have very good friends. Yeah. So you didn't go? I well, it would, it would be it would be next weekend. <laughs> More importantly, we came up with a good plan, which was to meet her during the week, which I'm meeting her tonight. Okay. And see how that goes. Yeah, yeah. Then, before you spend 48 hours with oh, a yes. stranger. Oh yes. Over three hours away from home. Listen, from my point of view, everything makes a good story. <laughs> I I mean I I hear that I hear that like even the the stories that Misha's heard and and the crazy things that I go through. The fun thing is that even if it was like a totally insane, terrible idea, it makes such a good story. The mm, next day. Mm. And I'm all for gathering data. I think gathering data is a good thing to do. I like that. I like that approach to dating. Yeah. What is um, one thing that really frustrates you about online dating or and or our social media culture and its influence on um, dating? I just won. Um, you started to mention it, the, the new seas that we are upon. Um, there's not a lot of cultural support for any kind of relationship that is real, <laughs> mm. that looks real. Mm. Because we uh, are all fed the sacraments of the romantic comedy or some such, or what our parents had. When in truth, we don't want that. We don't want what our parents have. We don't want what anyone else has. We want exactly the specific relationship we can have. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of support to continue to gather data to figure out what that is. What do you mean exactly by support? Support. Um, stories. Oh, um, I see. So just people that like, I met someone online. It worked. We got Stories married. that you can popularly ingest. Like precedent. A movie, Culturally. a book, oh, any oh, sort oh, of like precedent. in the zeitgeist. Gotcha. Precedent. Yeah. Exactly. Which um, a lot of people talk about being the main struggle of being a minority. And it's funny because we all want a minority relationship. We want one that's just ours. Mm. 
and we have we're ill prepared to understand that we live our lives based upon precedent for good reason because precedent is very useful history is a good thing sure but we are not usually taught that that is a starting place it's a path to deviate from to find what you want yeah so for me specifically i met a girl off of tinder there she was is. fantastic. She was a wonderful what? human being. That's not even fair. I know. <laughs> Might I'm, have all been rejects of society. I'm a very lucky person, my, my <laughs> parents and sisters will tell you. Um, <laughs> uh, she was fantastic. However, of course, there's a however. Oh. I know. I wasn't 100% sexually attracted to her. Right? And I don't know where this is going to go necessarily, but I, like on our fourth date or something like that, I was like... That came out, and I was like, I have to tell you this. Oh, wow. And we had tea, and we talked for a long time, and it was good. And she, because she's amazing, she's a human being that listens uh-huh. and leaves space and lives her life and is a boss. And I don't know that we're going to be able to continue a relationship, be- understandably so, because she would like sex from someone who worships her as she deserves. Yeah. But I would still like to be part of her life. Well, there's, that's that magical quality. Everyone always goes on dates. And I feel like if you even if you read, like I always read the back of Time Out, they've got undateables, right? Mm. Every single date they pair people up with. It's a blind date. They Someone <clears> makes <throat> a comment of there wasn't a spark. There wasn't energy. And the only thing that we can do, like it's an intangible thing that you cannot predict. And even when you are mentally attracted to someone, that thing is either there or it isn't. And it is... Un, there's no way to set that up when you're online dating. You're like, I'm, I'm attracted to this person, but something, some magical chemistry has to be present in order for me to take this further. Some of the most beautiful people who I know are just like stunning and there's no sexual chemistry. Yeah, I just yeah. do not want to get into bed with them or even kiss them. And in they're just like so magnificent to you behold. Want to want them. I want to want them. And then there's some fucking ugly dudes out there that <laughs> I like, have just been insatiable. But that it's okay. This is what I try to remind myself. It's okay when we're we're totally meeting strangers based on such little information. It's okay to connect just as human beings and be like, this isn't going to work out romantically, but I'm so glad that we met as humans on just like, and just connected on a regular person to person level. This happened to me on a date I went on recently. I find myself constantly turning down the next date as saying like, I'm just, um, I didn't feel romantically connected to you. That's the phrase I use. Um, and that basically says like, I didn't want to make out with you by the end of the date. I don't want to take my clothes off for you. Cause that thing isn't there. That chemistry isn't there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I, so I told him that and to his credit, he actually said, it's no problem. I totally get it. I'm so glad that we met and we connected because you're a cool person and I'd like to continue to get to, to, to know you. And I'm like, thank you for understanding that this is not a rejection. Like we're all just, can we just meet and connect and maybe, maybe down the road we'll be good friends or I'll connect you to someone I know, or, you know what I mean? Just making a human connection is honestly, is quite a win. I agree, and I think we are feeling that that's, I guess, the boon of social media is we're realizing that that is something that is so sacred, we need to leave space in our lives for it. However, we really don't right now. Yeah. And I know it's hard for me, as busy as I am, which is not the busiest person in the world, to leave space for a human being I don't really know and don't want to have sex with. Yeah. Yeah, because I really want to have sex. Right. right now? Like, let's do it. Like, just in general. Like, <laughs> oh, no, I know. It's <laughs> super fun. And it seems to be, like, very difficult f- to find someone who I would like to have sex with who also would like to have sex with me. So exactly what you're saying of, like, I have a million friends. Sure, I'd like a million more. But I also just really want. I just want to get laid. Oh man! And not just get laid. Like I want good sex. You want it? I want A plus gold star mm-hmm. sex, please. Absolutely. Universe, I hope you are listening. There are three desperate people in this podcast room that just need to get fucking laid. Mm. <laughs> oh god! I love that note, you guys. That petition to the universe to send us a hot, lovely person. Oh yeah, it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. Us. It is tomorrow. It is. 
<laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. I don't know. This episode probably won't go out on Valentine's Day, but <laughs> for whatever Valentine's Day means to you, take it with you into your day, into your week. Uh, thank you guys both for being here and talking about some pretty serious subjects and opening yourself up to me. So uh, with that, you guys, we will catch you next time. 